Our ability to measure error has far exceeded our ability to adjust for it. The five cut method is fantastic. It is a great way to square a sled, but I can tell you from experience, you can spend a long time, several hours chasing errors and beating yourself over what amounts to almost nothing. I built 10 crosscut sleds so that I can show you not only what human errors are involved in making a crosscut sled that are gonna affect the five cut method and squareness and all those things, but what is the maximum allowable error in our five cut method where we don't need to adjust? So where do we need to be so that we can get a reliably square crosscut slow without going nuts over chasing you know, SpaceX or NASA level precision? So let me show you how I'm gonna measure these things. Let's talk about the anatomy of crosscut sled and sort of all the places that we can have human error. Then we're gonna decide what is the acceptable allowance by slowly moving our fence out of square until uh, we get to a point where it's no longer acceptable. And then we'll talk about how do we mitigate all the human errors that go into making one of these guys. This is a Starrett square. This is a PEC square, considered to be one of the most accurate combination squares on the market. Both these companies are renowned for their attention to detail and accuracy in manufacturing. This six inch square, both the Starrett and the PEC, have a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.004 inches over six inches. So that is, Top of the top companies, that is their tolerance on a six inch square. Now, what is that? That means that the worst case scenario, a square that would still pass quality control in their manufacturing plant, has an error of plus or minus 0 0.038 degrees. Now, what does that actually look like? Because this is obviously not the scale, because 0 0.004 inches is tiny. In fact, I'll show you what that looks like. This is a Mitutoyo micrometer. <laughs> this is incredibly accurate, up to five decimal places and that is 0 0.004 inches. Can't even see it. And over six inches, that is 0 0.038 degrees of error. That means in a six inch radius circle, so 12 inches in diameter, there would be 9,425 pieces of pie with a 0 0.004 inch arc. Don't worry, we're not gonna get buried in the math here, but I just wanna make a point that the error rate in a steroid or PEC square is so minor that it would need 9,425 squares at max tolerance to equal a circle. So it's a massive amount. The reason we are talking about this so in depth is these are the squares we're gonna to use to measure our results to prove what is an acceptable error for the five cut method. So now let's get into what is the five cut method. Now this is how the five cut method works. It's for compounding error uh, of a cross cut sled and then you can measure it and adjust based on a formula. The way this works is this is cut one. We're just gonna clean up this edge and that gives us a reference. We turn it and cut two, and you can see our error starts to get a little bit bigger. We turn it again, this is cut three, our error is getting bigger. Cut four, our error is getting even bigger. And then cut five is going to give us a cutoff that looks like this. It has an A side and a B side. We're then gonna take a pair of calipers, is usually what people would use, you're going to measure that end, 0 0.35, 0 0.343. We're gonna put it into a formula on our website. For our test here, we're gonna use this micrometer, super accurate, so let's put these numbers in. So if we input uh, our numbers into the five cut method calculator over at camtools.com, I'll link it below. Side A, that's the top, the side closest to the blade, 0.339 inches. The side closest to me, side B, 0.3498 inches, we measure the length of the offcut, 7.204 inches, and we set our distance between our pivot screw and the end of the fence as 23 inches, we get an error of 0 0.009 inches. That means over 23 inches, our fence is out of square 0 0.009 inches. Now, if we think about that square tolerance example, over six inches, 0 0.004, we're smaller than that. In fact, with a run of 23 inches and an error of 0 0.009 inches, the amount we need to adjust our fence, we get an error of 0 0.022 degrees, which is close to half of what a Starrett square tolerance for a six inch square is. Let's make a cut on the fence here with, uh, let's say an eight inch wide board. We'll, we'll use eight inch wide boards here. We'll hold our 12 inch Starrett square up to it and we'll take our fence out of square until we can see light through that square. And that will establish our maximum error for our five cut method that is allowable. 
And then we'll talk about all the ways to mitigate human error in making a crosscut sled, which <laughs> I just made 10 of them. So I can tell you, I'm gonna be able to point to all the ways that you can mess this up. And then we'll come up with the kind of best practices for making a crosscut sled and how not to make yourself crazy chasing error. So with the stare at square, there is no discernible out of squareness, even with a 0 0.022 degree error, you can't see any light through there. So we're gonna go ahead and use this sled here, which I worked really hard this morning to get just about dead nuts. And we're gonna adjust the fence forward 0 0.01 degrees with a feeler gauge the same way you would adjust a crosscut sled if you were doing the five cut method. We're gonna measure our off cuts with this micrometer, which you can see is so accurate to five decimal places. This is a Mitutoyo uh, block for checking your calipers and squares. Uh, it's exactly one inches wide. We'll adjust until we can see light through our square and we'll figure out from that what is our acceptable error in our five cut method. All right, so I found it. I found where you can see light and it is at 0 0.088 degrees, a little over three quarters of a degree. You start to see a tiny sliver of light over eight inches, which guys, I'm telling you for woodworking, you can get it easily better than that, but you don't have to beat yourself up. I get emails from people all the time about the five cut method. It's like, I'm at 0 0.004, should I keep going? I'm like, no, definitely not. You are so square. So what did we learn? At a fence movement of 0 0.032 inches. I could start to feel it out of square. I felt the square could like rotate a little bit. It's hard to explain, but like the square doesn't feel locked in. It feels like it's tipping a little bit, sort of like a pendulum. On test three with a fence movement of 0 0.02 inches, 0 0.042 degrees, it was like locked in. If I didn't have these measurements and you know, forcing this compounding air, I would have done that and said, oh my God, that is so square. Let's keep moving in on our project. So I think kind of the answer here is anything between 0 0.02 and 0 0.032 inches movement on the five cut method. So over the course of your fence is starting to reach the upper echelon of acceptable air, but anything under 0.02 inches, if you get your five cut method to that, it's absolutely square. Now here's the problem, right? So. It's pretty easy to do the five cut method one or two times and get under 0.02 inches, but I just did it seven times in a row. But it's a time consuming process. You wanna make sure that you're kind of following directions. The five cut calculator on my website has directions on it. I have a couple videos, which I'll link below, but there's a bunch of ways that you can introduce excess air. So you need to check a couple things. Let me show you a few of them and how to fix them on your crosscut sled so that when you're checking for air, you're as good as can be. All right, first of all, the easiest one to control is dust. Every time, I don't know if you saw me in the time lapse, but every time I turned the board, I blew off this area. I made sure there was no dust. Dust trapped in your fence and between your board is gonna introduce more air. Same thing with your runners in the miter slots. Make sure you dust out your miter slots when you put your sled in there. You don't want a bunch of dust in there moving it around. Other things that are you can control is your fence should be flat. And that starts at glue up. You don't glue it up and then hopefully get it flat on your sled. You wanna start from flat. I have a couple ways that I do that. One is I shoot screws from opposite sides. So for this fence here, when I, was, I did a bunch of fences in a row, I shot three screws from this side and then three screws from the other. That clamped everything for me. And then it also sort of evened out all the pressure. So maybe it would help even out the air, but the glue was still wet. So then I like to clamp it to something flat like my table saw, or I'll clamp it to my jointer, clamped it to levels in the past, but you wanna make sure that your fence is flat. Other things that you can control when you're doing your five cut method is clamps and screws. So when you're doing your five cut method, I have recommended in videos that you put two screws, one for your pivot screw and one to hold your fence and do your five cut method. Now, those of you who have been woodworking for more than 10 minutes know that you have two screws over 30 inches. You can still flex this thing a little bit and that may be able to introduce air. So maybe instead of two, 
add a third screw somewhere in the middle. Just kind of make sure it's all sticking around and not flexing while you're doing your cuts. The other thing is your clamps. When you're clamping your block or when you're clamping your fence, make sure that your clamp is square before you lock it down. As you know, clamps can pull things when you tighten them down. They may pull them slightly one way or another. They may pull them out of square. So when you're doing your clamp, just take extra care to make sure you start flat and square and you tighten and you watch what you're doing and nothing is shifting when you're tightening down clamping pressure. The next thing that you can control is your runners. Let's talk about those. All right, this is an old sled of mine that I used hardwood runners on. I now am a fan of plywood runners because I think they expand and contract less. But look at this. That's almost 5 thou of play. So, you know, that's going to have a major effect on your five cut method. And if every time you push le on the left, you know, it, it cuts one way. And every time you push on the right, it could make a big difference as far as your five cut method goes. My point being is that if you get under 0.02, great. If you get under 0.01, fantastic. If you get under 0.01, well, Jesus, send it to the Hall of Fame. Let's talk about how to fix sloppy runners because I don't think this is acceptable. But let me show you some ways I've done it in the past. So this is that same sled. You can tell it's been, it's been to war and back. But what I did on this one to fix the sloppiness is I glued veneer to my runners. Now, if you look over here, you can see why it's sloppy again, because all of that has worn off. You can see there's a little bit left, but it's worn off, and that's where I'm getting my sloppiness. It's probably also worn down some. Here's my favorite way now. This is how I did it in the past, but now let me show you what I do. This is the new Cat's Moses Universal Box Joint Jig. It's over at KMTools.com. But if you look at my gauge here, I'm pushing on the side. There is no play in that. There used to be, and let me show you what I did. I just put a little blue tape. Look at that. Now, so I'm gonna take this blue tape off and we're gonna put it back and you can see how much play that takes out of the runner here. So look at that. One piece of blue tape takes out 5,000 of play. So if you have a real sloppy table saw sled, you can do two pieces of tape or three, whatever you need to do, but make sure that you have no slop in your runner side to side. All right, now let's say this was your cross cut sled. This is actually one runner that comes with the box joint jig and I cut it way down so that it's super sloppy in here. Now, if you think about this, this is like riding a track, right? So if you hug the inside of a track like a train, it's gonna be real tight. So you could, even if your runners are super sloppy and you haven't attached them to your sled yet, take a wedge, wedge them in before you glue them to your sled. And then if you hug the inside, you can be super sloppy and still get it super tight. And then if it's still sloppy at all, put some tape on the inside and you have a super tight sled. Your sled should feel firm to push. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to feel like you're pushing a sled across the gym floor, but you know, it should be nice and firm in there and not have any side to side movement. All right, let me show you one last one I discovered in this test that has never happened to me before and I'm glad I can pass on to you. Now, when I was making all 10 of these sleds, I was so careful to make these so flat and so square. You can see I jointed everything. I really took my time and this is super flat all the way up here. But as I was doing all these five cut method tests, well, look at this, watch. I got a really big rock right here and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't up here, but down here. And the reason is I shot a screw too close to the edge of this fence and it bulged out just a little bit where the head of the screw is. It bulged out the fence just a little bit. So when you're doing it, make sure you draw some lines on the bottom of your sled and you're shooting for dead metal of your fence. All right, let me finish up with you and then I'll uh, let you get to making ice cream or playing Barbies or whatever you guys do. All right, so what did we learn? Anything under 0 0.067 degrees, which for me was 0 0.032 inches of movement, you're not gonna be able to see any light through there. Probably wanna get under 0 0.02 inches over 27 inches, so that's a run of 27 inches, a rise of 0 0.02 inches, which comes out to 0 0.042 degrees. You wanna get under that. If you wanna figure out this math, don't don't try and remember your geometry. Just go to ChatGPT and enter rise of, of 0 0.02 inches, run of 27 inches, What? how many degrees is that? And as long as you're under 0 0.05 degrees, you are golden. So uh, if you're getting under 0 0.01 inches of movement on the five cut calculator, you, do, you can stop. If you get in triple digits, you won. So, you know, be easy on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Make sure you adjust all those things on your sled that you can control like sloppy runners, flat fence, dust in your miter slots and in the way of your fence, all those things. And then uh, get back to work, make some projects, have fun. Guys, as always, this uh, channel is entirely supported by people visiting camtools.com. We don't take sponsors here and your support means the world to me. You can also find out about our charity, the Cats Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund in the about section. Guys, as always, stay safe in the shop and thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.